Childhood Sam was an experience. <laughs> I think that's the only way to describe it. I grew up in a really tight-knit family, so I had an older sister and a younger sister, which makes me the problem middle child. Not that I would get in trouble because I was doing naughty things, I just was in everything all the time. You know, I grew up in a world where it was, it was my family that went to church, my sisters and maybe my cousins, but I don't think it was really until college that I actually could say, whoa, <laughs> God is everything. Jesus is my everything. I went to college all excited to go for my animal science degree and started having conversations with different people and started forming a relationship with this, with this really nice guy. And ultimately, he had proposed. So I graduated May of 2013. I had worked so hard, everything was set, I was engaged, I had my degree, and it was beautiful, so cool. But then a week after, I went up north with my fiance and their family. It was a beautiful day outside, no wind, no rain, blue skies, and we were getting ready to actually take the boats over to the boat landing so that we could take them for a sail. So the last thing I remember was standing in the front yard looking at my fiance, and while I was standing there, and so, <sighs> so I see him reaching with his hand out to the sailboat, and ultimately everything just goes black. You know, when everything went black, what had happened is a dead tree had fallen on me. People lifted it off of me. I guess I wasn't breathing at the time, so um, I think my fiance gave me CPR until I started breathing again. And they called 911, and then I was driven from where the tree had fallen to a clearing. And then from the clearing, I was airlifted to the nearest trauma center, which was actually all the way in Fargo, North Dakota. So once I got to the hospital, they figured out I had a spinal cord injury. And then on top of all of that, <laughs> I was a dual injury. So I didn't just have my spinal cord injury. I also had a traumatic brain injury. I had a 10 hour surgery in order for them to, to stabilize everything that had happened within my back. The surgeon told my mom and dad after he got out, it's like, it looks like someone just went into her back with a hammer. The whole point of being in the ICU is just to get stable enough to not be in an ICU anymore. <laughs> um, so thankfully that eventually happened. So what do you do next, right? Like you're still a mess. You still have a lot of things to figure out. So you have to go to a place that specializes or understands what that looks like and how you can best recover. They found out about Craig Hospital, which is in Denver, Colorado. It's a hospital that specializes in traumatic brain injuries and spinal cord injuries. So I was at Craig for two months. I was stable enough, so my discharge date was set and we're ready to go. I say, okay, I'll let you, let you go back into the world. You can go figure it out. I think those first three months when I was home are probably the hardest time um, that I can think of to date of like my experiences on this world, <laughs> in, on this planet and in this world. You know, my fiance was with me out at Craig the whole time, then he went back to Minnesota for his schooling. But we were in our, our own real world. We weren't in the world of Craig anymore where disability and wheelchair and spinal cord injury is normal. Maybe a few weeks started to realize like, okay, yeah, he, he doesn't actually want in this anymore. And so then he ended it. And this form of myself is no longer good enough no longer good enough. Yeah. And so how do, you, how do you deal with that kind of pain? I don't even really know how to describe what that's like when the world keeps spinning, but yours stopped. There's nothing left. Um, what do I grab onto? And thankfully, <laughs> there was a light. Praise God that he empties us of ourselves, that he can fill us up with him. Because I know that's, that's what it was all about. Stories of healing are beautiful things. I see those stories, especially the one in Luke, healing of the paralytic, you know, we rejoice for that paralytic. But I also realize that like, sometimes God heals in ways that you can't see physically. When I look at my own story, and looking back at the girl that was injured May 25th, 2013, and this girl sitting here today in 2023, <laughs> I've been healed, but I'm not walking. <laughs> God has worked and God has healed me in ways that I can't even describe, but I want other people to just know how good our God is and how great he works and he moves and 
how some of the most difficult moments are also the most beautiful. So I recognize it may be a little strange to have had a service on healing and the girl in the wheelchair is the one hosting. And yet I feel like it's pretty God ordained in a lot of ways. Um, I can tell you from my own experience that God heals in ways that we don't always expect.